Okay, um, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Joy. Joy and I seem to skip past each other at assistive technology conferences for many years just saying hi. And Joy would be forgiven for thinking that I was avoiding her when in actual fact I always had in mind that she would come and present at our conference. And so uh, back in January 2011, it was lovely to interview Joy as a, a promo for, for this conference. And while, the, in fact, Greg was doing the videoing and, and while it was a little forced at first, we soon settled into sharing our philosophies on assistive technology and some of our ideas. And so it's with pleasure that uh, I invite, um, have invited Joy to come and share those philosophies and ideas and her uh, many um, experiences with you today. So please uh, put your hands together and welcome Joy Zabala. Thank you. I actually wondered last night at the end of the day if that's what I would sound like today. Those of you who know my normal no voice know it's a little bit lower this morning, but I just pretend I'm Lauren Bacall. So our topic today is raising the achievement bar with universal design for learning. 10 things educators and families need to know. And those of you who've heard me talk about 10 things about lots of different things before, is that usually it's not exactly 10 things. It's more like 100 things, but it sort of, they sort of arrange for 10. So let's get started with this. The main ideas that we're going to talk about today are big ideas in universal design for learning. What it is, where it came from, principles and components, the connection to other initiatives and resources. And in true universal design for learning fashion, we'll be looking at getting those things together in another way as well with the GPS approach to understanding UDL. And we'll also hear a student talk about some of, or actually sing about some of his experience as a student who needs the supports and services that you provide and offer. So with that in mind, I think what's important to, to talk about a little bit is that for the last few days, you have heard UDL lots of times, haven't you? You've heard people refer to UDL. You've heard people talk about the three principles of UDL. What, it's sort of a, a backwards uh, looking at this right now because what I'm going to talk about is sort of the basics of UDL. To give those of you for whom UDL was something new a little bit of an idea of what, where UDL came from. So, number one, the UDL framework supports the design and implementation of a flexible, responsive curriculum that provides opportunities for all students to participate and achieve. That's the key thing to know about, about UDL. And keep in mind, too, listen to that word framework. It's not a do this, do this, do this, and then all students will achieve. It's a way of thinking about and planning what you do and what you use to, to support your curriculum that makes a difference. 